GMC is finally updating the Sierra. Hennessy gives the Velociraptor treatment to the Bronco, and we say so long, farewell to a bunch of great cars. All this and more in this week's edition of Fast Fridays. Following the last uninspired update, GMC just blew off the doors with the unveiling of the 2024 Sierra HD lineup. Driven by a more powerful 6.6 liter Duramax diesel with 470 horsepower and 975 pound-feet, with more torque available across the rev range. The gas 6.6 liter power plant will stay the same with 401 horsepower and 464 pound-feet, but now mated with a 10-speed transmission. The 2500 HD crew cab towing capability has been increased to best in class 21,900 pounds. Get the max tow package and you can raise that capacity to 22,500 pounds. With all new looks and colors, new trim levels will be offered as well, including the off-road capable rugged AT4X and the super luxurious Denali Ultimate. Tech has also been finally updated. You'll be welcome to the cabin with a 13.4 inch infotainment screen, a 12.3 inch digital instrument cluster, and a 15 inch full color heads up display. New pro grade trailering system tech will proliferate the option sheet starting with a staggering 14 different camera views and transparent trailer cam to virtually see through the trailer you're pulling behind you. Very cool. This week, Hennessy announced their Velociraptor 500 Bronco based on the twin turbo 3 liter EcoBoost V6 from the Bronco Raptor. It has been retuned to 500 horsepower and 550 pound foot. There are a few new hard bits like the exhaust, wheels, lights, and bumpers, along with unique badging and decals. I didn't know if anyone really knew the Ford GT was still being produced. I didn't, but they are, and they're about to stop with the final iteration, the Ford GT LM edition. LM for Le Mans, which is a nod to their 1966 and 2016 podium finishes. No real significant changes to the already fantastic 3.5 liter twin turbo EcoBoost V6, which will still produce 660 horsepower and 550 pound foot of torque. Updates will mostly be aesthetic with splashes of carbon fiber and Alcantara. The most unique detail is that the badges will be 3D printed from ground down shavings of the 2016 podium finishing GT engine's crankshaft. Only 20 GT LMs will be made. Now all that torque their 392 and 4XE models are making, Jeep decided they no longer need the 3 liter Eco Diesel V6 in their Wrangler lineup. They're celebrating the current call with a 2023 Rubicon Far Out Edition. Though mostly stylistic upgrades, you do get the option of mating the RockTrack 2-speed transfer case with a 4 to 1 low range, something that was only available prior for the gas engines. Order banks are open now but close in November, so if you're interested, make sure you get your order in soon. But fear not Jeep diesel lovers, the Eco Diesel remain as an engine choice for the Gladiator. Originally unveiled in 2005, it's been heralded as one of the best handling road cars with Huracan performance in a more livable configuration. But alas, all good things must come to an end. And for this Audi, it will be the 2023 R8 GT. It will be the most powerful rear wheel drive Audi in history. Not only will it be the final R8, but also the final V10 for Audi. It will have 602 horsepower, 413 pound foot, good for 0 to 62 in 3.4 seconds. Top speed 199 miles per hour. A new 7 speed dual clutch transmission and 7 levels of traction control changed by a new control on the steering wheel. So you can dial in how much drifting you want and how much your balls are up for. Lighter carbon fiber seats, carbon fiber front sway bar, and forged aluminum 20 inch wheels keep the weight down only 333 are being built for global market. Like the R8, the TT is also on its last lap. I remember when it first came out, there was nothing else that looked like it. And interestingly, there still isn't. The TT celebrates its 25th year with the TT RS Coupe Iconic Edition. Only 100 examples will be created and only for the European market. Driven by the 2.5 liter five cylinder with 395 horsepower and 354 pound foot shot through a seven speed dual clutch auto to all four wheels. All the iconic additions will be Nardo Gray, with more than a few bespoke black aesthetic elements inside and out. During a run-up of their stock, Porsche's valuation rose beyond its former parent company, Volkswagen, reaching 85 billion euros. In comparison, at the same time, Volkswagen's stock valued the car manufacturer at 77.7 .7 billion. Mercedes rounds out the top three in Europe at 57.2 billion. Rivian is on pace to meet their 25,000 vehicle target this year with a record third quarter. Shares rose almost 8% this past Tuesday after the announcement. It's in contrast to the recent announcement that Tesla missed its third quarter market expectations. Earlier in March, Rivian halved its annual production target from 50,000 units to 25,000 due to global supply chain issues. This week, Hertz announced a partnership with oil giant BP to install electric vehicle charging stations across North America to help support their growing fleet of EV cars. They aim to have a quarter of their vehicles be electric by end of 2024. 
The new partnership is targeting 3,000 charging stations by the end of 2022, which will be open to Hertz customers as well as the general public. This all ladders up to BP's plans to install more than 100,000 chargers globally by 2030, 90% of them being rapid chargers. The OPEC alliance of oil exporting countries decided this Wednesday to sharply cut production to support sagging oil prices, another blow to the struggling global economy that was exasperated by the Ukrainian war. The plan is to cut production by 2 million barrels per day starting in November, with the hope that the impact on gas prices will be limited due to OPEC already missing production quotas. During Tesla's IA Day this past weekend, Elon Musk showcased the current iteration of Optimus, Tesla's humanoid robotic vision of what could change the world. A little lackluster, Optimus slowly and clumsily walked out, waved, turned around and walked back. They also showed what the final product was closer to resemble, though that robot didn't do anything. Their robots are driven by Tesla's Autopilot AI, the self-driving tech found in Tesla cars. Musk said the robot can do a lot more, but quote, we just didn't want it to fall on its face. After Need for Speed Heat, developer Ghost Games was taken off the series. Now welcoming back former producer Criterion, also the producers of Burnout, they will be releasing Need for Speed Unbound just in time for Christmas. The cell shaded art style will be significantly different, but the gameplay will rely on the tried and true story-based scenarios of building and racing cars while avoiding the police. If you like this type of content, let me know by driving over that like button and then back up over that subscribe button so you know when the latest Fast Fridays is uploaded. It's your weekly summary of automotive news from around the world. Until next time, have a great weekend everyone.